All right, so what is going to be the second best solution? So let's again uh, write down the monopolist optimization problem subject to the constraint, right? I mean, the constraints are such that you offer a, a contract, a package, where both type 1 and type 2 are actually willing to buy those packages. So here is the maximization problem. Maximize what? Expected profit. How do I write expected profit? Well, don't forget, profit is P minus 0.5x, right? I'm going to produce two packages. Let's denote them x1, p1, x2, p2. Why two packages? Well, because there are two types. And so the optimal thing for the monopolist is to produce two packages, not three, not one, two packages. Okay, um, so the maximize expected profit. Well, with one half probability, it's going to be the low type who, so this is a type one, this is type, I mean, this is the package intended for type one. This is package two that is intended for type two. I mean, type two is supposed to buy this package because it's designed specifically for him. And this package is designed specifically for type one. All right, so I don't want type one buying type two's package or type two buying type one's package. So in the insurance example, think about the healthy guy should buy this insurance package. The sick guy should buy another insurance package. Question is, how can I make sure the price, the insurance premiums, and the, the details of those packages are such that everybody really buys his or her own uh, sort of uh, uh, intended packages? So with one half probability, it's going to be type one. And in this case, the profit that the monopolist is going to get is P1 minus 0.5 X1. Remember, uh, there's only one customer. It's either type one or type two. So here I offer those two packages and the customer picks one of them and then Monopolist produces that package. All right, so the other package will never be produced. All right, so don't forget that. So P1 minus 0.5X1 with one half probability. This is the surplus profit Monopolist will get if the customer is type one customer. And with one half probability, P2 minus 0.5 X2, this is the profit a monopolist can get if the customer is type two customer. And so these are the probabilities. And hence, this is the expected profit of the monopolist. All right, so let's write that. Expected profit. Good. What are the choice variables? Well, here, there are many choice variables. Monopolist can choose P1, X1, P2, and X2. So there are four choice variables. The monopolist is free to choose. Okay, there are too, many, too much, I know. Well, what are the constraints? So subject to, well, don't forget, the customers should, <coughs> oh, excuse me. The customers should buy those bundles, right? Charging P1 very high and X1 zero obviously increases this payoff. But in this case, uh, type one will never buy it because he will get negative utility. So therefore, if you offer a package, the customers must have at least zero utility. So individual rationality constraints. Uh, what are they? Well, there are two customers, two types of customers, I'm sorry. So the individual rationality constraint for a uh, customer of type 1, which is 4 squared of x1 minus p1 greater than or equal to 0. This is individual rationality constraint of customer uh, type 1, I'm sorry. And then there is type 2 customer, which is going to buy the x2 p2 package. So her utility when she buys her package. Uh, so this is again for type one and this is for type two. Don't forget, we want type one guy pick this one, type two pick this one, all right? So we want to screen the customers. So it's also greater than or equal to zero. This is individual rationality for the second. Is that it? Do we have any other constraint? 
Um, yes, in fact, we do. What is it? Well, remember, we want type 1 guy by this bundle rather than this bundle. How can I ensure this? Well, if 4 squared of x1 minus p1 greater than or equal to 4 squared of x2 minus p2, well, then that means the type 1 customer's utility, if he buys the bundle for him, is greater than or equal to his utility if he buys the bundle that is that was designed for type 2 well then we expect him to buy his own package all right well we, this is a constraint that we call incentive uh, compatibility constraint of type 1 okay or briefly, it's called IC, incentive compatibility. So it's incentive for type 1 to buy his own package rather than buying the other package. Well, obviously, we have to write the same constraint for type 2. Type 2 should buy his own package rather than buying the other package. What is it? 3x2 minus p2 should be greater than or equal to 3x1 minus p1. So don't forget, this is utility of type 2 when he consumes x2 p2 package, the second package. This is the utility of the same agent, the same type, if he consumes oops, uh, the first package that was designed for type 1. All right? So that's what I am writing. So this is the incentive compatibility of uh, type 2. So is there any other constraint? No. That's the all constraints I have. So this is basically the, uh, not this, the solution of this optimization problem, which has four constraints, is going to give us the second best. All right? Well, the question is, how are we going to solve it? Well, <clears throat> uh, there are different ways. One way is you can write down the Lagrangian or the Kuntucker, all right, and then determine the optimal P1, P2, X2, and X1. Um, that's the hardest way. I am going to show you a few tricks to solve this question, um, but I am going to do it in the next episode.